Hey, hey. Uh, I just wanted mostly to welcome, first of all, to the stream. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a planned stream. I just wanted to see if I can uh, stream from my phone because I usually, whenever I stream on YouTube, I do uh, digital sketching, not traditional one. So I thought, uh, let me just try and see if I can. Uh, live stream a little bit from my phone as well because then I can do more of these uh, traditional sort of sketches maybe I was thinking of maybe doing another live stream on Monday since it's been a while since I did a live stream so and I do have the time it's it's sort of a sunny but cloudy day here today not much uh, I wanted to do outside so perfect for just a little bit of sketching around and chilling on the inside and just drawing uh, then, uh, Raj Sekar, thanks for posting the videos I have learned a lot very happy to hear that Raj that is the main reason I post these because I want uh, I want to share a little bit of knowledge that I hear there with people uh, Simon phone is going well as a viewer. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, I, I did want to, to stream more of my traditional stuff anyway. So uh, at least now I can do more of these. The only thing is that now that winter is coming, it's going to get darker quicker. So I, I will have to, I, I keep on planning in my head at least to upgrade my lighting. But I keep on being lazy. <laughs> is my fault but now that it's becoming darker earlier i will have to do something about the more uh, proper lighting uh, focus and quality is good well that's good then as it's 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 a relatively good camera so i the only my only problem with this is whenever i shoot uh, video if you guys follow me you probably already saw it is that i can't really control the um, white balance which means that the, the camera flickers between making it blue or warm, I mean, cold and warm, uh, depending on how much uh, light it gets. And that's a bit annoying, to be honest, for, for viewing quality. Uh, one of these days I will have to, and because I, I bought a different camera, but uh, I don't know if that doesn't get, my, my problem, I guess, is just lighting in general. I don't have a studio light and I just try to use as much uh, natural light as possible and that is sometimes tricky because it's natural light and it does what it wants, <laughs> right? Anyways, uh, I don't really have a big idea what I'm doing here. I just wanted to, to do some um, traditional sketches, well traditional, sorry, um, furniture stuff. I haven't drawn furniture in a while and I, I always love armchairs and I do have some uh, what you call it a uh, Pinterest board open with all sorts of different uh, armchairs and whatnot so I'm just trying to do random stuff I just like uh, sketching with pen and then I want to take a photo of this on my iPad and maybe give it some uh, colors there let's see but yeah feel free to uh, ask questions if you have any okay let me just I had a little thing here that I liked okay let's just see I was thinking oh what happened mm, I hope everything is still fine some sort of Well, not sure what uh, what this is going to be. I want some sort of vertical drawer thing. What I envy about people who don't necessarily uh, just start sketching, but they have an idea or they just take their time and think about something and try to draw that out. 
I don't really have that. I love to just uh, put down the pen or pencil onto the paper and just see what happens. Just just start sketching uh, and just do it organically, which is fun, but it ends up with very uh, <laughs> dirty and sketchy drawings, which also depends on what, what you like. Some people do like that sort of stuff. I would like to be a little bit cleaner, but yeah. For that, you need to have a much clearer uh, idea of what you're drawing. And I don't quite have that. Okay, so let's see. Something, if, if this would be standing, let's say, in a corner, so it would have drawers going two ways. I sort of like that idea. So there's a drawer here as well. Or it could be some sort of tower as well. I do like the idea now just instead of drawers, just having maybe flower pots or something like that. Uh, right, some new people. And uh, Dogfight Gaming, thank you so much for these videos. They have helped me so much. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Happy to hear that. It's, it's drawing is what I do to relax. And if I can share what I know with others, that makes me happy. But also, I don't always try to teach with my drawing. Sometimes I just want to draw goofy stuff because it's fun for me. I don't quite know what I'm doing with this one, but it's, a, it's an interesting shape. Like I'm thinking of sort of like an asymmetrical, like think of, of, of a skyscraper, but it's not a, sky, a skyscraper, it's something in your room that could have all sorts of flowers. Like that, and then maybe. Well, this 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 just makes the whole design stupid. <laughs> but now I have it in my head, and I just want to put it in there. Maybe a lampshade or something on top of it. I like I like having these stupid ideas because I do do feel the need to just get it out of my head, and then I draw it once, and then if the idea would come back, I just see it on the paper. I'm like, oh no, I did that already, so I don't have to waste any energy when doing it again but yeah this this sort of doesn't really doesn't really make much sense but then if you have this let's say next to it you could have a, an armchair and whoever this person is he they, they love uh, flower pots and and apparently all sorts of green stuff i could c turn this armchair into like a semi and let's see here on the left, you have this green pot area where you can plant something just a little bit there. Okay, and then how would we, let's do an armchair that fits with this. So it's relatively rectangular, but we want it to be comfortable as well. So I'm just gonna do the general squares where the cushions would come. And then we're going to try and sculpt something more comfortable into there. Let me see something like that. Yes. Okay, so we have the backrest and where you sit. Uh, you would need some sort of armrest on this side and then armrest on this side. Uh, let's just go with a very typical angled approach. But oh, this I like this. So the little design element, the, the detail is this, almost like an N or A N sort of combination here. And then on this side, it's interesting because now I have to think it should be on the outer side. But oh, what if I do something like this? So it's still on the outside. There we go. 
don't want to make that too strong because there's going to be many intersecting lines and I can see it in my head now but I need to make it a bit stronger there we go so I hope this is somewhat visible something like this all right start start to like this so this would need okay background oh, I like this okay I think I will need to redraw this just to clarify to myself what I'm doing here as well so if this this is like earth here right this is like a big long flower pot or obviously the the, the why well, because we're designers we can quickly rethink this now as now i was thinking okay you have all those flowers here what if here we would just do books i think that's a sort of a much better idea and it also makes more sense so i'm just gonna do all sorts of books so somebody keeps there because that's that's a little bit of a problem of mine whenever i start reading i just have one or two books i don't always just read one book at a time uh laying around the house uh, uh thanks guys <laughs> well I, i'm just trying to come up with different ideas like concepting and ideating like this is you have a lot of not good ideas okay but i do like this so let me just take another piece of paper there we go. And I think I talked about this once before that I should do most of these in sketchbooks, but I just love drawing on paper. And the background is that coming from good old communism, we didn't always have money for uh, drawing materials and drawing stuff. And my mom was working as a uh, accountant and she just brought a whole bunch of paper and and pens and pencils well brought if you know what i mean <laughs> from home with her and i just got used to drawing on a loose paper okay so we have this little area for the books then which might need some resign and then once again we had the cushion here and now i can start with making the cushion just a little bit more uh, actually i don't need these papers below it but i'm going to start rounding this a little bit uh carl one i just started watching your channel and it's made me take an interest in industrial design i'm still a beginner so i wanted to ask what basics would i need to get into industrial design um well first just let me tell you that industrial design is it's it's like <laughs> not just drawing so that's that's always important to know right industrial design is coming up with uh, product solutions service solutions and drawing is just one of the tools that you use as an industrial designer and you can use it you, you, you don't need to use it i know plenty of people with whom i studied together who didn't necessarily like drawing and also they're not really drawing now uh, so just think of that when you think of industrial or product design as well, that it's not all about drawing and form giving. If you want to learn drawing in the type that, in the way that industrial designers draw. Okay, this, this is bad here. I should have given this a little bit more of this. Okay, sorry, back to your question. Uh, I do have the basics of industrial design, so definitely follow those. Um, and there's also my professor was called Ko Sison, and he has three uh, industrial design books that are quite good. I did enjoy them. So let me just Ko Sison industrial design sketching. And if you Google this, you will you will probably find his books, and I can recommend it. But yeah, just keep in mind, industrial design is not just sketching. Okay, so this is this sort of A and frame. So we have coming up, 
going down and then going up again. And then this happens sort of on this side as well, going up. So we have these, then it comes over here. So this is sort of, I, I translate it over here so you have the, the arm can stay there as well. And then you close it. Actually, something interesting when you talk about product design in general is that things change, right? Throughout your life, throughout humanity, everything changes. And because we live in an age where there's so much, everything is digital, a lot of products that we consume are digital products. So when you talk about product design at the moment, many people will directly think of, of digital products. So people, a product designer will be a person who designs apps, who designs digital products. So that, that is also an interesting change right now. Okay, so I'm just going to make this a bit stronger. So now I would like this to not be a simple box. It would be cool if it was something more. So what I am going to do is because we have this, this transition of this armrest here, I'm also going to just switch this up in elevation. So I'm going to bring it down here in the front a little bit. And I'm going to push it up there. So it's going to be like in two levels, just like that. And I sort of like this. Because, so and then here we would have the books. Just drawing a couple of books there. There we go. Just some loose ideas, don't have to worry about it. Still ideating, we, we still might to redraw this a couple of times until it work, works in our heads. And I'm thinking if this might need some support coming from there. Yes, close eyes and uh, if I, uh, if yeah, so here, close eyes and exactly. So just look, look him up. And uh, he's definitely good. There we go. And then this, so now I'm thinking, should this also be for books or should this, because what we could do, okay, so let's, let's rotate this baby a little bit. Let's, let's look at it from uh, top, so from here. It would be looking a little bit like this. Um, sketch drawing techniques for product design, course art. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's uh, that's the book I meant. K key H. That's that's the one that you should check out. So he has two sketching books and one on sketching presentation. And I think uh, I think the second one and the third one are my favorites. No, at least I, I like those more. Okay, so here we have the cushion. Here we have the cushion that's a little bit lean backward, right? So from here. So this is where the person is sitting. Let me draw some nice bum or bum cheek. <laughs> there's, the, there's, there's the weight that pushed it in a little bit. And uh, then here we have this transition arm thingy. And here's the actual armrest. And on this side, we have the armrest as well. And then here it goes into the A-frame. Well, actually, yeah, here it goes into the A-frame, and here we have this A and M. And then I guess here it would, it would go down there. Yeah. Something like this. And then here we have the books. One, two, three. And then now the question here, because I could just fill this up, right? So this could be just one a uh, big wooden area and I start to like that. So think of it like we have this and then here it comes down, it goes a bit forward. We have the books in there and then we close it up, goes that way, close it up there as well. And basically this is, this is the transition into there where the leg goes down into that A-frame. 
Uh, what do you think about Scott Robertson? Does he lean towards ID sketching or more artistic? Uh, definitely ID sketching. I think his background is also he is uh, an industrial designer. So he's, that's, that's definitely industrial design sketching. But then industrial design sketching that goes more towards the entertainment industry, which I would say is also what I do. Because I, I do these sketches mostly for fun and entertainment, not necessarily for functionality. Because... Uh, I'm not in production. I don't design products at the moment. I, I mostly do uh, freelance work, which is a bunch of illustration, uh, concept art, stuff like that. So it's it's not necessarily product product design. So if if you're more more interested in the the, the drawing style and and drawing for entertainment and and concept design, Scott Robertson is definitely a good a good way to go. And, and his books, he's, I think two books that I like from him is how to sketch or how to draw and how to render. And those are really good. So, you know, I like that there's a bit of space there. Mm -hmm. What do we do there? So first of all, I would keep this slight separation. It's just cool when, when wood plates are a bit separated. And then that goes up there. Just like that. And then here we would have our cushion to sit on. And then this would be where well, you can put another book on it. And let's see from that side. Okay, let me, so let's turn the chair again because we, we like turning things here. So we're going to look at it from this side now. So let me, let me just do, this is a, a, a and this is the A, A, just to bring in a little bit of technical drawing in here. And this would be B, B. So if I put B, B here, then we would be looking from that side, which is like this would be the base. Then we would have this elevated side, then this lower side. And then this is somewhere where this A frame would come here. And then this probably I think probably it's cool if this goes around our tilted uh, backrest area. So there's probably a piece of wood plank there and then uh, the cushion is resting on that. And then here it comes down. There we go. Something like this. Okay, now here we have our books, right? Let me close these up just to make them look most like books. Then this is our hand rest. This is on that side. And what you can do is just draw a little bit on the back side as this goes down, comes down there, and then goes up again. So this would be on the other side of the chair. I'm going to put it into shadow by doing just a little bit of cross hatching on it and then I make sure that the, whatever is in front is a little bit thicker lines so we understand that what's closer to us is a bit thicker what's further away is thinner and also in shadow okay let's see some more uh, what is your job as an industrial designer can you give any example or experience about your job uh, yeah as I said <laughs> I don't really work necessarily as an industrial designer I work mostly as a freelance Oh, I would say 10% I do industrial design. So I do the early phase, the sketching, the ideation, the, the coming up with ideas. 70% uh, would, would be visual thinking, which is uh, helping people translate like strategies within companies and like very complex stories and ideas. I put them into visuals and then we have 20% left, I hope, uh, which is then illustration and concept art as well. Also, spaces. I feel like here, then here, we could have some sort of, what a cool thing would be if you have sort of a place for uh, a little bit of alcohol, right? Like when you're, when you're reading a nice book, you want to have a little bit of... Uh, whiskey or whatever people are drinking i don't know i'm not a big fan of uh, whiskey i do like a little bit of uh, of rum so maybe you have i don't even know what sort of glass you would <laughs> you would keep there 
but uh, it's just nice to have a little compartment there for uh, if you want the alcohol but, but you could also keep anything else there so I, I think I start to like that so the cool thing here would be if the books go in underneath here so where is the above so th this is this is the area and the books go in below there yeah I think I start to uh, start to see what I'm drawing here uh, okay more questions uh, would you say industrial design would be helpful for someone pursuing engineering as a career? Yes. Uh, well, industrial designers have to work together with engineers a lot. So it would be much easier for you to communicate with industrial designers if you understand their language a little bit. That's for sure. Um, G. Mixa, are you drawing in two point perspective? Uh, not, I think it's three point. It looks like two point, but it's, I usually do draw in three point perspective. So if the easiest way to check, let me get a ruler. So I have a ruler here. And let me take another ruler. So two point perspective we already have because these go there and these go here, right? So the, these are two points. Now the third point comes in. And if I take this and prolong it here, as you can see, and I take this line and prolong it here, it would be two point perspective is if these were parallel. So if, if this would be looking like this, but as you can see, it's somewhere down, somewhere down there, there is a, a third point, which makes it a, a three point perspective. So basically instead of, let me, let me try and draw it. It's actually, I find it hard to draw in two point perspective. Oh, something like, okay, I think this is relatively two point perspective, but I don't draw like this. I draw more like a bit like this. This is the, I just, I just this, this is also a bit more dramatic and also a bit more realistic. So there you go. So two point, and then this is three point. There's the, there's the difference. Uh, what pen or pencil do you recommend for beginners? The cheapest ones that you can find. <laughs> it's, it's as easy as that. This, this is like, this is, you get a 12 pack at in the Netherlands is Hema. It's like a local uh, convenience store uh, or chain store, something like that, but you get 12 of these for one euro 50 or two euros. So I just, I just go for the cheapest stuff. Don't, don't worry about getting ex, uh, expensive things. I do need a new piece of paper though. Okay. Give me, give me one second. I'm bringing a new piece of paper. All right, there we go. So now I sort of have a pretty good idea. Well, maybe before that, I'm just going to rotate this view like this a little bit. So I look more from that side. So let me just quickly draw it out because I want to draw it a bit cleaner for, for sort of the render. So it would be something like this, right? So this is the wooden plate goes like this, there we go. Then here we have the compartment, then the books, All right? The books go there, compartment goes a little bit higher, goes like that. And then here we have the, the cushion to sit on nice let's close it there then we have a little bit of maybe that's too much let's not make it too tilted but then something like this this is the backrest then this jumps out just a little bit as as i said and then from here we have this inclined sort of thing pops out a little bit here do we have anything else 
Uh, Three-point perspective has more edge and volume than two-point perspective. Well, I, I'm not sure about the volume, but edge for sure. Yeah, so you, so it's 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 a bit uh, sharper if you wanna if you wanna look at it from that point of view. Any recommendations for ID design unit in Germany? Ooh, yes, there's actually a lot of good ones, but I would have to uh, look it up. I don't know by by head. Oh man, there's a couple of couple of good ones I know because I was doing an uh, internship in Germany and I was contemplating on staying there for doing my industrial design studies there. But then I decided against it. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff in Germany. I just nothing comes to 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 mind right now. Uh, novice art. Yes, you did the request. I, I was I was gonna do more traditional anyways. It's just now it was a good time for me to see if I can uh, do a little bit of um, just streaming traditionally as well. Okay, so this goes around. We will have the door here. Uh, there's nothing there actually. This is the shadow. I'm confusing myself. Okay, and then here we would have the books. I'm a bit annoyed now with the German situation because I knew a couple of good ones, but if you if you go on Instagram and because uh, what's the title? So there's a couple of industrial design uh, Instagrammers who actually have an, I have an interview on. So if, if, if you look at, go through my library, I have an, uh, an interview with a German industrial designer. He was working at that time and now he decided to do his master's as well. Uh, but I think he mentioned where he was going to uni. Uh, you should check that one out for sure. Okay, something like this. This can be like that. Hi, I was wondering, since you are working on chairs, could you produce some inversion table designs? Do you know? Uh, inversion table design? I'm not sure I know what you mean by that. I will uh, have to Google what that exactly means, inversion table design, because Right now, I just think it's like an upside down table, <laughs> and I don't think it's that. Okay, so this is from that side. This is from that side. I think this is actually the better side because it tells more than than that side. And this is getting empty, so I'm gonna probably switch to a different one. Uh, do you know Sangwon Silk? Mm, doesn't sound familiar. I'm gonna quickly sign one silk. Uh, I think I follow him on Instagram. Just seeing uh, his uh, one of his drawings, I think I might follow him on Instagram. But uh, yeah, definitely cool looking stuff. Like I, I'm envious of people who can draw cars that well. <laughs> okay, final drawing here for our render. Uh, let me see a different pen. Maybe this one is a bit uh, not as empty as this one. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, so basically same idea. I sort of set up my box. The problem is whenever I decide to do uh, final drawings, I become less loose. So I become a bit more stressed because I want it to come out nice. And that's meh. <laughs> that actually takes away from the dynamism of the, of the whole thing. So I'm trying to stay loose. The idea is I want to use less lines. I want it to be a little cleaner, but because of that, it also the drawing feels just a bit stiffer. And I am trying to not let that happen this time around. Okay, so this comes up here. 
and something like this. Yeah. There we go. Uh, okay, an inversion table is basically a chair that pivots around 60 to 80 degrees if you are free Sunday or whatever producing some design things I really love. Uh, I will look into it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I'm not familiar with the term. I do like the, the way you describe it. I, I like furniture that uh, uh, transforms or furniture that have has different uses. Okay, so this is cushion. All right. I have to make sure it's a little bit rounded, right? We don't want the cushion to be super. There we go. I guess this is where it ends. Something like this. So as you can see, I, I, I put down very thin lines in the beginning because I'm, I'm looking for the, the right line and like these help me because later I just come in with darker thicker lines and I just make sure that those will be the, the main visible lines so I like putting in the center line as well just so we have a better feeling for this chair uh, how do you get the idea imagination Reference, always reference. <laughs> Never do anything without reference. Uh, I I saw many other artists and people who who draw in general or creatives having a talk about this as well. Especially as a beginner, you do not have the visual library. You did not draw that many um, furniture pieces in this case. So how would you accept of yourself to come out with your come up with your own original furniture designs if you never actually did not about never but people who work in the furniture industry do this day in and day out so they want they have a million pieces that they saw a million pieces that they had to research and that they drew over and over again so they have a whole bunch oh are we running out of this What's going on? They have a whole bunch of experience that you as a beginner, in this case also me as a beginner, because I'm not a furniture designer, I don't have that experience. So I'm not going to force myself to, to come up with something that I have no experience with, because all that's going to be is I'm just going to be frustrated because I, I can't come up with original ideas. How would I be able to come up with original ideas when I don't have the experience? So that's why reference is so important because you just look what's out there. The important thing though is with reference, you have to pay, pay attention not to copy. Okay, this is that, let me take another one. Because using reference doesn't mean that you, you're going to copy it. It means that you get inspired by different elements. And whenever I use reference, I usually have, well, I can, I can show you my Pinterest. Oh, let me go there. So let me pivot up. Here, you can see my, well, as, as well as you can see, here's my Pinterest. So I had just different chairs and different things open that give me sort of an inspiration of what I'm going to draw. And I just looked a lot of things and, and, and try to think of what I want to do and, and, and try to just take inspiration. That can be style, that can be function. So... Yeah, never be afraid to use reference. Uh, can you make tutorials for shading and coloring, but real time from start to finish? Um, yes, there might come some in the future, but I, I can't promise anything. Uh, if you go through my live streams, I do think I have quite a couple where I go from beginning to finish, but also this one is going to be not a tutorial. It's more like a, a process of me going from beginning to finish. 
if you check out my sketchbook tutorial, I have well, it's a sketchbook for beginners, I guess. I, I, I'm not sure what I call it anymore, but there I have two parts and the first one is just going through all the elements of sketchbook. The second one is, well, yeah, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not real time. So that's, the, the thing is real time takes, takes a while, you know, it, it depends how, uh, detailed you you want your uh, drawing to be because it can be up to three four five hours as well and nobody's going to watch a video of three four five hours and it also becomes boring because i'm not going to be able to talk constantly for three four five hours it's just uh, craziness i'm not there i am i am not all there <laughs> but i'm not there <laughs> I am going to make probably some more um, Gumroad videos though, where I might, uh, I still have to figure out how I'll solve that as well. But I will have longer videos as well. The, the thing is, some people really like long videos, some people really like short videos. It's easier for me to just film myself doing something in real life, but then I'm going to be a bit more quiet probably because it's easier when I do it like this in a live stream because I have you guys to ask me questions and then I can answer that. And that's sort of fun for me as well. But if I'm just alone in front of a camera and drawing, it's not that fun to not constantly keep on talking, I can tell you that. And also what happens, a lot of ums and mm and mm, and it's not the, the most pleasant for you guys either. Okay, and there we have it. So just gonna draw in a little bit of shadow. And I'm gonna draw it from the other perspective as well. And then I'm gonna take a picture and some colors in uh, Procreate. All right, let's, let's make this angle a bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna try to more from above, right? And so this is the main piece. So this I don't care that much about. And you can already see me loosen up a little bit, which might also mean that I'm going to make more mistakes. But hey, I don't really care at the moment. So usually you need if so whatever you're drawing for, you know what you're drawing for. But in my head, this, this is like sort of a project. This I would need to present to, uh, oh, what do they, I don't know what the person who does furniture is called, but uh, I wouldn't call it an engineer, maybe a car carpenter. I don't know what they're called, but a person who could actually build this. And then you want to show your product off from as many angles as possible because you want to communicate your design as well as possible. That's why it's important to draw it from several angles. Okay, so this is the box. It goes up until there. A new question. What are the best type of paper to design onto? Oh, uh, not the right person to answer that because this is cheap copy paper that I'm using here. It's, I'm, I'm always, I'm, that's, that's gonna be an answer that you get from me quite often. Just do cheap shit. You don't need the ex expensive stuff. Whatever works for you, works for you. If, if it's expensive stuff that you like, go for that. But uh, I, I, I go with cheap stuff. The, the thing that you have to think about it when you do that is if you come in with marker, if you wanna go work with marker, then it's gonna hit through. So, yeah, if you want, you can get marker paper, which it doesn't hit through and it, it works quite nicely with markers. I, on the other hand, somehow, I'm not a big fan of marker paper. It's a bit too slippery. At least that's how it feels to me. 
uh, and I just like the, the normal copy paper much more, even though it soaks much more of your, um, it's a bit strong like that. It soaks up your markers much more. So it's gonna empty your markers faster. But as I said, I just, I just like much more how the uh, marker feels on normal paper. But you have to think of it like that. It's really the tools that you're using are only as helpful as experience you are with using those tools. So if, if you're somebody who has been drawing for years and is good with drawing, then you can take advantage of those tools. If you're new to drawing, then there's no reason for you to invest in expensive markers, expensive paper, because you're just not going to take advantage of it. Same thing with me and photography. Like I'm just, I don't have the eye for photography. So it's, it makes absolutely no sense for me to invest into an expensive camera for photography because I couldn't take advantage of it anyways. Like, because it's not just having good equipment, it's, it's having good eye for composition, lighting, time of the day. It, it is a lot of things that I just don't know when it comes to uh, photography. And the same thing applies for drawing as well. So don't worry about the best paper and best pens and whatnot for drawing. Anything gets the job done. There we go. So this is also a piece of wood, sort of an inlay wood. It goes until there. Connection points, connection points. And that's it. Just gonna do it here as well. Now to make some of the lines a bit stronger. Well, actually now I'm gonna, uh, where's my, I'm gonna jump to a thicker pen that I might have here somewhere. Let's see, something like this. Mm, there you go. Something like this. Okay. With that, basically, I'm done. And now I can take my iPad and do some coloring for this one. I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay as it is. So now we're, what we're doing is... Nope. So camera, okay, and then good old trusted procreate photo, let's take this one, all right. Well, not the best photo I took, to be honest. Uh, let me just take another one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is, there we go. Patient. See what I, I, I was just talking about, not being good with ph photography. And then I prove it to you guys. Not Netflix, please, not Netflix. Everything go away and procreate. Am I in the camera? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, this one can go away. Go away. 
I'm no this is this is riveting. This is entertainment for you guys. <laughs> let me let me do it. There we go. See, this is much better. Ah, much better. Okay. So uh where is my appropriate uh, I'm gonna duplicate this just in case I have an original one. And now I'm gonna go into curves and bring the brightness up a little bit and make sure that the darks are still there. And I'm happy with this. I make sure that this layer is a multiply because then I can make a new layer below it and just start uh, filling it in. Go to freehand and this is the, this is the part of what you were asking for live so how to how to color and how to render and do everything well this is the not so interesting part because this is it this is what you have to do now i have to do click by click by click and just select the whole thing uh, so i can fit it later with color and this is not so sexy or interesting so it's always good to just fast forward through this part uh, can you show us portfolio and any suggestions? I actually do not have a portfolio. My only portfolio is my, um, whatchamacallit, Instagram account. So that's my portfolio. You can look at that. Okay. And now I'm just going to fill it. You can fill it with whatever. I just, I just need this for, for the moment. And I'm gonna clear this. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna do that one for now, but I am going to. Hmm, what I'm going to do is this and go to here. Actually, no, I do have Pinterest. So I don't know why I don't directly go to Pinterest. And I'm just gonna look at furniture and just get inspired by uh, the render material. Okay, so I like wood. So I want something woody. Uh, and if I look at my piece, I would say this looks, yeah, mid-century. So I'm just gonna write that in there as well. I, I do have mid-century anyways. Mid-century modern, there we go. So I'm just gonna use, steal basically the, the wood texture here, the wood color is what I want to use. And I don't want to go super dark. And this is also, this can take quite a while because it's until you find something that you like. So I do like this here, wood-wise. I wanna see if they have, oh, this is cool as well with the black. Would that work with mine? Where would I add black? This door could be black. Mm, no, no. I'm just gonna, hmm, oh, these are, these, this, these are all cool wood colors. I do like these. So I like this green. I might th think of that. And okay, let's just go back and pick the one that I like. And I like this wood. I just, I just do like this wood. So, I'm just gonna do this. There we go. And done. Save to photos. Okay, so back to Procreate. And now I can add, insert a photo, all photos, and this one. Yay. Right, I can turn this one off and I only need this part. Well, technically, I'm going to take those two as well. I'm going to, where is the invert and clear. Boom. So now I have a nice little reference material here. And what I can do is I'm going to lock this layer. So basically, I can't draw outside of it. And go to color. Well, not go to color, but just color pick a little bit of this brown and just bring it in here. There we go. Uh, bring the lights back. Okay, so I need to isolate the cushions, which I'm going to just make a new layer. 
and do the same sexy selecting. Uh, let's see if you guys said anything else. Um, I think cheaper is better because once you switch to better equipment, you have the necessary skills. Exactly. It sort of hampers you, making you try harder and less than you do. Exactly. So that's, that's, that's precisely what I meant as well. Uh, do you use Shaper 3D? Yes, I do use Shaper 3D, but I use Shaper 3D more when I, oh, it's not needed, more when I know that, so for, for bigger projects where I really want to make sure that everything is uh, correct and I have the right proportions. And since this is just now for fun, like I didn't even know what I was going to do here. I just wanted to test if I can uh, live stream with my phone. So that's why I didn't build this in Shaper 3D. But yeah, I, I, I do use it. But I also use Fusion 360 quite often. Uh, and we were talking about, yeah, Pinterest doesn't work that fantastically with, uh, okay, I see teal, green, I already used this greenish. So now I'm looking for colors for the cushion, right? Uh, let me just mid-century modern arm chair. I just want to see what sort of, oh, I like this orange. I don't know how pleasant that is too. Blue again, very cool. Green is quite nice. I do like this. I do like this. Do they have anything else? So I don't want to just be gray. It's a bit boring. I want to be a little bit bold with my color. This is cool as well. But I want to be on the brighter side. So orange is too cold, too close to the wood. So you want sort of blue and orange and green and orange are complementary colors. And as you can see, they have a lot of greenish with the wood because it just works nicely. So I think I might take this green for now and I will probably lighten it or see if they have, oh, no, sir, it is not where I wanted to come. Um, num, 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 Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna print screen this as well. There you go. Done, save to files. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Add photo. And here's our photo. Uh, like, if you start analog and switch to digital, you'll find digital much easier and effective than something from analog. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure about that because, um, oh, could, could be, could not be. I know people who don't like working digital. They like uh, analog. They just like the feeling of uh, traditional media. I find traditional media much harder. Personally, not feather, invert. Uh, clear. Okay. So let's drag this to the side. Thank you very much. Oh, great. I just did. The, I forgot about the selection, didn't I? Yes, that's. Ah, uh, yeah, great, 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 great. Select tool. Oh boy. Well, there you go. At least you see me fail live when I do these sort of things. And then I make it that much more interesting for you guys having to redo the same boring selection process. How, how riveting is this super entertainment, isn't it? But yeah. That's what you get for life. Anyways, I now that I have this, so I, I go out of the selection boxes here because, hey, I'm streaming. <laughs> so good. Uh, I'm going to fill this and I'm just going to make this a uh, clipping mask and then there's no problem at all. Okay. Selection can go away. I could make a different selection now for the box as well. And I'm just going to make it below it because then it's automatically a clipping mask just to make my life easier. And I'm just going to make the box uh, something dark. There we go. Problem solved. Okay. So now for 
the rendering part. I do not want to see this. I want to see this. And I probably want this on top of my lines. There you go. Uh, for lighting, I'm going to go from this side, even though usually I go from that side. But I think it's more interesting if we light from that side. So I'm just going to copy this wood, come over here and do some selecting. And I'm going to paint these areas in with the brighter color. Uh, some a little bit can go there on the leg as well. Maybe a little bit here on the leg. Some here. Oh. Like that. And the top here. Up until here where there's some shadow being thrown on it. Okay, now I take a nice big airbrush, please, something like this. Oh, it could be bigger. <laughs> because the bigger it is, the softer you can work with it. And here as well. And I forgot to select this area here. There we go. What's the brand of the tablet? It's an iPad Pro. It's, it is an iPad Pro. Good old iPad Pro. All right, so now the light comes from here. Let me see if I forgot any areas that need some more light. What I could do is make sure to take a bit of the light away from here just because I want this to be a bit of an inlay, right? So take that color, make sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Um, then the next thing, and so this is a bit low quality. So now I go here, let's see, wood texture. And furniture. Oh, actually, I don't need furniture. Images, tools, size, large. And what do we have here? What do we have here? Let me write furniture. For a drawing video, there's an awful lot of not drawing here, isn't there? <laughs> um, I like this sort of looks good. This is also nice. But that's a bit rough. Let us go back to this one. Uh, copy. Back here. Uh, paste. Make sure that is above these things. And then yeah, I don't want it to be a clipping mask. And I'm gonna paste again. As I said, I like to keep one just in reserve, just in case. And what I am going to do with this is, there's a cut there. And I want to use just the non-cut version. So I'm gonna pack and clear. All right. Now, just make sure, oh, yeah, freeform and press, and then we can adjust it as we need it. Make sure that's in perspective, because then it just looks better. I don't want to squeeze it too much, but I want, maybe if I push it down here. Ah, uh, the problem is I should have, uh, but this, this works though. I do like, I do like this. And now I can actually, if I, if I want to, I could bring it down there. Mm. Let me see. Clipping mask it is. Yeah, it works. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mask it anymore. I'm just gonna erase because I'm lazy. 
and it's faster if I just use the freehand erase tool like that. Oh, no. There we go. And we can clear this. And make sure this is overlay. And if you want to take the color with us, you can also go to uh, hue saturation. Let's bring down that saturation and maybe give it some brightness. There we go. Like that. I like that. That looks uh, nice and woody, right? So what we're going to do, take this one, duplicate. So we always have it there in the background. And now I'm going to do sort of the opposite. I'm going to erase the left side. Clear. And I'm going to use this side here. Let's make it smaller. And make sure that it fits the perspective. There we go. Bada beam. Are you Polish? No, I am not Polish, <laughs> but I am Eastern European. So at least, uh, at least in that regard, you, you, you can hear my accent that it is there. Let me cut from here. I think I'm going to go here as well and replace that maybe later. Clear. There we go. See, uh, bring it here. Same, uh, first let me put it into overlay mode, then bring down the saturation. Yep. Yeah, I can, I can work with this. Same thing. So this, this is going to go on for a while because if you're too lazy to paint in, actually it might be faster if you, uh, to be honest, if you just paint in the wood texture, then if you do this, let's see, make it smaller, back to free form, just like that. You might think it, it doesn't matter to adjust that little thing if I want to use it here, but the grain, the grain will go along perspective, which is nice to have if if you want the texture to be as correct as possible it's nice to do that part as well overlay and then oh wrong one desaturate and now i can already see here that i want to put some shadow in there and bring it down to where it belongs and duplicate one more time and tap around without any coordination okay let's see so let's just bring it down there skew it hey hey buddy come on skew it there And skew it, not from there, okay, press low, that's what I wanted to do. So this is a bit, there we go, I think, I think we have it. And I'm just going to bring it a bit forward because I want that to be covered there as well. Okay, and I think this might come a little bit here as well. Yeah, I like that. Okay, boom. Bring it down here, make it an overlay layer and make sure that, oh, not again, wrong button. Bring down saturation. All right. So sort of this area we do not need, oh, one back. Up until there. 
clear. I like that. Maybe I could erase that as well. Nope. That's the eraser. Oh no, the wood is there. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, are you Polish? Is it iPad? Yeah, it's an iPad Pro. Any other cheaper tablet? I would say go with the uh, with um, drawing screen for the computer. Anything like XP Pen or the Huyans or uh, even the cheaper Vacoms. If you want to draw on a screen, you can use the, the Vacom 1. Uh, I think the 13 HD is relatively affordable, around 600 euros, but the Vacom 1 should be around 400 euros. So um, that, should, that should keep you afloat. Okay, so to save some time, I'm just gonna take this one from here duplicate it and bring it over here and just adjust the texture a little bit. Come on, buddy, freeform. There we go, make it a tiny bit smaller because I want it here, as you can see, and a bit down there, just like that. And Basically, what I'm going to do is select this and which one is it? This one, yeah, and just erase it here. Clear, boom, problem solved. In that nice, uh, yeah, I think I think that's enough for now. Like here, we could have some more, but pff, I don't care about that. Uh, one more thing that I could do is let's see. So I'm going to put all of these, actually, no, I'm just going to put all of this into a group. There we go. And I'm going to name it uh, colors. Turn it off. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Pancreas Snow isn't last the Hungarian name. I think it's Oslo Slovak, but I am Hungarian indeed. I am Hungarian. Let me take away this for now and bring this also on top of the drawing. And I'm just going to do the color picking here. Go back into this. Make sure that these two layers are locked as well. I'm on the right layer. And I'm just going to Ruin a little bit like that. Uh, feather it just a bit. I'm going to give it like 2% of feather. So it makes sure that the edges are a little bit softer. Just go in a bit like that. Okay. Maybe. No, that's a bit too thick because we have sort of a nice rounded edge here. You can come in here a bit. And also here on the side, just a little bit. What I could do is give a little bit of a hint that there is sort of a shadow happening there. Like that. Uh, feather it a little bit more now. Although I shouldn't feather too much. Because the closer the shadow to the object, the sharper it is and just bring in just a little bit of this should make it look sort of better i can actually take away some of it you don't want it too strong yeah i like that okay and then some here i would like to try okay actually we have let me see if i how would this, I would just remove this area here a little bit. Uh, and let me see if I can paint it. I have a texture here. I want to use a little bit of texture like this, because this looks quite good. I like how that looks. I want to imitate a bit of that. 
just a little bit of wear and tear, if you know what I mean. So this, this is a bit of painting and, and seeing you, you might need to uh, get some different brushes as well. Just, just see what works best. So I might go into painting. Let's see what they have here. I don't want it to be too rough. Next, how does this work? This might be on the too rough side, to be honest with you. But yeah, it doesn't really. Uh, let me change. What is the shadow? Let me get this color a bit. No, this is too rough now. I don't like this. But I think I'll stop. Yeah, and I didn't, didn't really make that thin. Um, okay, so now an inch minute. <laughs> uh, what inch is your iPad? It's the 13 one. It's, it's the big one. Because I, I work quite often with clients. And if I, so that's why I bought the Wacom for myself, mostly because uh, I wanted something that I can carry with me if I go to a client. What's, uh... oh yeah, wait, let me turn this off. So I, I wanted something that I can carry with me to a client. And this seemed to be the best option. That's why I went with a big one because it's still like it's carryable, but it's also it has a good surface for uh, drawing. Let me just take this one then because I just want to smudge it a bit to make the edge just a bit. There we go. Okay, there's our line. Do you know any alternatives for Procreate on iPad? So if you want free, I would say uh, Sketchbook Pro. This is what I advocate all the time. Let me just new sketch. No, let me go to gallery. Uh, and... I haven't, there we go. So there's, there's my stuff. Uh, I think there's less painted stuff here and more but i did this for example for a tutorial so it's i think it's quite it can do a lot i'm not the biggest fan of the layers because it uh, doesn't do uh, folders there we go but for drawing ideating it's i think it's perfect here actually i took something because you were asking about um, shaper 3d so i i modeled let me take this away. So I modeled this in Shaper 3D, as you can see, and I just brought down the opacity, put in some other ones. And basically, if you take this away, I just drew over it, did the lines, sort of, I don't know, I think it was an idea for a, for a time machine. Uh, close. And back to gallery. No, don't save. Discard changes. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, there's not much else I can show you here. I had some furniture sketches here as well. But yeah, anyways, um, that's I think it's a good alternative. I would recommend you go for it. Uh, okay, let me come back with a little bit. This I'm going to push the brightness just a bit. And I'm going to go back to soft brush. And let's work a little bit on the edges. Are you married? No, I am not married. <laughs> not planning anytime soon. I do have a lovely girlfriend that I love very much, but I am not married. So this is where the light hits a bit more. So the edges can be a little bit brighter. And here it can be a bit brighter as well. Because so it, it turns, and usually you have a little bit of brightness and a bit of darkness there as well. Let me come back here as well. Like that. And now, where is this? I want to take also the darker areas. See that shadow? And just like that, see this throws a bit of shadow. So I want to make sure that we have a bit of shadow there. Oof, that's that's harsh. That's harsh, my brother. 
uh, ambient inclusion. So wherever you have objects meeting like this, there's not a lot of light bouncing in there, so it becomes darker and darker. So feel free to add some extra shadow there. Same here. Ooh, but a uh, bit on the strong side. There we go. So there's there's less light bouncing. Here we also have just actually this whole whole area. I'm gonna make a little bit darker. Make sure not to forget feathering. And I can make this bigger. There we go. I am happy with that. Okay. Um, just if if you want to stay with the fancy photo bashing, you can do uh, books. You look for them. You take an image, and then blah blah blah, blah book front maybe. Yeah, here I like this. So I'm gonna body go to this one. Copy. And where do I want it? I want it here. Paste. I'm just going to select automatically everything that's there. Clear that. I don't want that white stuff. Uh, and I have one, two, three, four, five books. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's, let's just see how it, how it fits. Uh, make it smaller first of all, and then just try oh, free form. Try to see green, green that works there. I like that. Yeah, I think uh, that's sort of there we go. And now I'm just going to select my books. <clears throat> select. Not automatic freehand, please. I'm going to invert the selection and erase everything outside of that. There we go. Now I just go to the eraser. I don't need these at all. So I can erase these. And I don't need the top of this, right? And the top of that. And the top of that. Well, actually, I could leave this. This looks sort of nice. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... Ooh, wrong brush. Uh, let's take a hard airbrush. Could make it a bit bigger. Uh, make sure to select my books. We select and then go back here because now I can't. Oh, all right. I thought I wouldn't be able to. Oh, yeah, of course. No, because the green is below it. Yeah, that's that's true. OK, so this is more like this. No, let's just stick with a darker color. Yeah, there we go. And on the inside, I forgot to draw this on the inside. Yeah, then we can go to our green. I think these greens, I'm just going to do all the same. Because why not? And there, and a little bit there. And now I can just go to white, but we, we never have white. And we might have a little bit of yellowness in those pages. Uh, go away from the green. You don't want to be close to the green. Something like this. Actually, it can be much darker because there are older books. I'm pretty sure it could be darker than this as well. Actually, I like this much more. So let's just recolor with that. And this, these are basically our pages, right? Boom. And here as well. There you go. Now we have our books. Quite sexy, isn't it? Uh, which brush did you use for the black? pen lines. Oh, that's 
that was drawn by hand. <laughs> that was actual pen. <laughs> it wasn't a brush. I just took a photo. So it's a, it's, it's a mix of uh, digital and non-digital. So now we have this. I can lock these and I can... This will need a little bit... Come on, brush. Of grading as well. Make it a bit brighter. Go back to our soft brush. Just a little bit like this. Might have some. We can do a little bit here on our darky book as well. Let's take the brush, select, push it into the brighter a bit. Yes, how nice is that? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> you don't want too much. Um, okay, that's. I would say that would be almost enough. But before I do that, uh, let me just uh, take a brush, yeah, and go towards the black. Now what I'm going to do is just a bit that same ambient occlusion that I was talking about, right? Because there's no light bouncing. The closer we come to the wood, we get a little bit of this darker shadow on the box. There we go. And that makes it look just a little bit more authentic. All right. Um, I am going to turn these off a bit and I'm going to bring a little bit even more brightness into the wood. Uh, where's my wood? There. Uh, bring back these. So now that I selected it, I push it quite bright. Let me see how much brighter I can go. That might be a bit too much. Or it might not. I, I do like it though, I must admit. I am going to do that here as well. Just like this. Okay. And then here as well. and take away this nice darker part. We're almost done with this part, and then my favorite part can start, which is adding some sexy details, highlights on top of everything. A bit here as well. Brush. Oh, this was already pretty bright, so it doesn't change much there. Okay, I think that's cool. So now what I like, is I make a layer on top of this one and this will be my rename details and I forgot to name this lines All right okay and on the details I actually have the right thing I just go to let's see digital pen let's see how thick it's it's a good thickness and now you can add a little bit of these beat, <laughs> a little bit of these highlights. This should look relatively good. Like that. Softer and you can go thicker there. Just like that. If you want, you can actually take that nice airbrush and just unify it a bit. Like that. Should still look it might look a bit more digital, but I really don't mind it at this point because I know it's a digital drawing and it, it, it gives an interesting effect. There we go. I can live with that. I, I do enjoy that. Uh, back to our digital pen and just make sure that some of these edges are a little bit sharper in this nice and you can also just paint over a little bit so i'm going to make my pen a bit thicker choose a color from here make sure well actually i could do i could do better i could go to my layer give it a mask and then just 
erase some of the lines here because we don't need all of them like that thing so that that makes it pop a bit more i can take some lines away here as well just to make it pop just clean it up a bit here and there uh, Okay, back to the details, steal this color again, make sure it's thin. And it's shape. Yeah, so here I'm paying attention <laughs> and I am talking quite a bit less. Um, Okay, let's see. I missed a couple of questions, didn't I? Uh, painting looks way harder than sketching. I need to learn some color and light theory. Yes, that is uh, pretty much my problem as well, because I was always more interested in line drawings than painting, and I do have issues with uh, painting quite quite a bit. Painting and, and rendering, stuff like that. It's just not my forte, but I do try my best, and... I do try to do it as often as I can, but just to just to keep practicing. Uh, have you tried technical drawings or drafting? Yes, I have. I actually, in university, I was studying engineering where we had to do a lot of uh, technical drawings. And that's why I t uh, chose mechanical engineering because I knew that there would be some type of drawing and it turned out I really enjoyed technical drawing. Just really fun explaining things to engineers or people who will have to manufacture things. So yeah, I did do it and I did enjoy it quite a bit. Okay, let me add a bit more of this here. Uh, do you stream on Twitch too? Yes, I started out years ago streaming on Twitch, but then for some reason I just, uh, I don't know, I stopped because I couldn't grow an audience on stream, on uh, on Twitch. It just seems everybody's interested either in gaming or in, uh, let me not use the, the T world word, but they're interested in, in girls, <laughs> watching girls on uh, on Twitch, not necessarily drawing, or I'm just not good finding the, the correct audience. Um, you can use gel pen brush too. Yes, you can, not the biggest fan of it. Uh, so this this has this texture to it. It's it's rougher, it bites a bit more. The gel pen is, is a bit too artificial for me, which obviously it's digital, it's, it's going to be more artificial. But uh, yeah, you definitely can. I'm just gonna make sure to, oh boy, that's that's not what I wanted. Bring in some darker shadows. This can be much darker actually, something like that. Yeah, and we can bring in some of the brighter stuff here as well. There you go, I do, I do like that. Then this could be an edge. And this is too bright for my taste. So I'm just gonna take my eraser, make sure I have a medium hard air brush. Let's see, I'll just bring down the opacity. Ooh. And just take it, uh, take it down just a notch. I watch you grow and see you draw for years and I still enjoy seeing you draw, keep it up buddy. Thank you very much Terry, I uh, really appreciate that. I really do. And I am trying my best, <laughs> indeed. Uh, I think I can come down here. Uh, is this there? Yeah, and I'm just gonna erase the texture here because probably something that is not wood. Clear, and then I can come to this part and just say, okay, let's fill this 
with sort of a metallic color, which is bluish, like that. Yeah, that is fine. And then we can take a darker blue and my sketching pencil and just paint in a bit. Also less saturation. And then we can bring in just a spot of brightness there as well. Even though there, there shouldn't be too much since it's in shadow, but I don't care at this point. Uh, that looks Korean to me. I really appreciate you commenting, but I don't think uh, I don't understand any Korean. I do hope it's Korean, though. I don't want to miss uh, misjudge. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do here, like if, you're, if we're talking about this, bring some darker browns in, just like just as we did before with the shadows. So probably here, there's quite a bit of dark brown. Give me that nice air brush. Uh, I feel like I can go darker as well. Push that up a bit. Yeah, that's that should be good. And then here, just just as the cushion is getting a bit darker, the wood should get a bit darker too. There we go. That's fine. And here, because this might be throwing a bit of shadow. Uh, let me take this out. I don't want to go over this metallic thing that I just painted. Okay, it can be a bit thicker. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Uh, I could actually extend this and say everything along this should get a bit darker. And I'm almost done with this one. Uh, hey, I think if books were kept horizontal, then it would be easy for the person who was sitting on the chair. I realized it's just now. Uh, yeah, just reach in and pull them out. Obviously, they, they seem a little bit <laughs> too jammed in there, so I don't think that is... Uh, Good solution to jam them in like that. There we go. Yeah, I do like that. Uh, I feel like, okay, let me, because this is a bit, hmm, I'm just gonna paint in on, the, on this one. Let me see if I have, just gonna use my sketch brush and just do some Am I on the right layer? Yes, I am. It could be thicker. Yes, it could. And the opacity was low. Oh, there we go. Um, anything else? He, she is saying hi, and he, she got to sleep. <laughs> Thanks, Angus. And I was correct. It was Korean, wasn't it? Yay. <laughs> Thanks for the translation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to choose a book by reading its title. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you like this, you will probably not know <laughs> what you're picking out. But uh, it, it, in version two, right? In, in version two, we will figure that one out as well. And are you designing chair, by the way? Yes, I, well, in this case, I am chair designing this chair, but I am not a chair designer, if that's what you're asking. Okay. So the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try and bring in a bit more texture into this chair because I like how this looks and I want to emulate that just a bit. So I want it to have a bit of, a, of that wear and tear. And what I'm using now is basically just the, uh, the sketching brush, but I changed the tip to a uh, rectangle. It's not necessarily working as I was imagining it, but one thing that I like to do is just, there we go, it's on the wrong side. <laughs> I like to give uh, contrasting 
line to this center line that I usually join into my drawings. This, this is actually a really fun part for me, this sort of, of painting, because you just turn off your brain and you just enjoy the painting. It's a little bit like, I don't know if you guys ever watched uh, those strangely satisfying videos, I think they're called, on YouTube or wherever, where, I don't know, like a chocolate press is pressing out one chocolate after another or something like that. It's just like calming, really, really calming sort of thing. Well, it doesn't look like that at all, but uh, uh, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm done with this drawing now. I had I had quite a bit of fun with this. Um, where are you from? I am living in the Netherlands, in uh, Amsterdam. That's that's where I am from at the moment. Just cleaning up a little bit of details here and there. Uh, these books, they would be sexier if we give them a bit of a highlight edge as well. So I take this, push it to the left, and just make sure to give it a bit of a edge like this. And I can do that here as well. Edit shape, move it a bit. And I can take, so see that this is sort of not correct because if you look like light, the light for the books come from this side, but our light comes from there, but psh, don't tell anybody. In this case, uh, we just, uh, we're just going to cheat a bit. And this will make the books pop up just a bit more. Uh, I can also make it like that. Let it, let's, let's fade it in. I, I don't want it too strong. Same here, just there at the edges. Okay, that's enough. Uh, let's see the last questions and then I will uh, call this. Let me turn this off because now it's not so cool. There we go. Um, I joined a bit late. Where did you do the sketching part? The sketching part I did on paper. So here's the paper and I just took a photo of it with the iPad itself and just started uh, drawing over it. Uh, was it on paper? Okay, yeah, it's answered. Is the Surface Book 3 an all right touchscreen for drawing? Sadly, I do not know. I have not worked with the Surface Book, so I don't have an answer for that. Which pen did you use to make the preliminary sketch? It's the, the cheapest pen that you can buy here in the Netherlands in a supermarket called Hema. You can get like 12 pieces for a euro 50 or two euros. Any tips for adding textures in Sketchbook? I'm a noob in rendering. In Sketchbook, you can use basically the same thing that I did here. You can just import pictures, put it on uh, overlay. I'm gonna open Sketchbook very quickly <laughs> because I think I did it here. So this is a Sketchbook. Uh, as you can see, this, let me move it a bit. This is a texture layer, uh, one back. So basically I imported this wooden uh, texture and I just kept on skewing it so it fits onto each of these. And then it's an overlay, uh, where, where it's an overlay, the opacity is brought down a little bit. And that's it, that's how I added the texture. Basically just use photo, photograph, put it on an overlay layer and try to adjust that it works together with the perspective. Um, yeah, I think, okay, before I, I leave, I am going to add just a bit more detail. I'm going to add a bit more of this green. Let's see how that works. Ooh. I, I just want to the edge a bit. I like this warmness of it, so I'm, I'm going to bring that a bit more in. And a bit here as well. It makes it look a bit cartoony, not that realistic, but I, I don't mind at this, at, at this point. 
you can if 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 you already decided that you're gonna go that way, you can also add a little bit of cross hatching. Cross hatching is usually gives you this nice feeling of of worn place. And now you can also think of the use. So where do people sit? Like where where use happens where you have a lot of friction. So your legs usually touch this area quite often and they move around here as well. So there's there's a higher chance that you will have friction in these sort of areas. And also here because your back is moving a lot here. So I'm just gonna add a bit more of this. Yeah, see so yeah, this 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 is a bit too um the 90 degrees was a bit too unnatural for my taste. So I took that away. Add a bit more here. So this is where your back is most often and you probably slide up and down when you sit on something like this. So there's a high chance that there's gonna be friction and wear and tear. I like this, this from, from one of the previous let me see what happens if I take the P -P -P painting brush. I think, was it this, this? And I just move it in a bit like this. Oh, oh, there you go. See that, that, ah, oh, that works. Now I'm a fan. Now I'm a fan of this because it, ha it, it has the, the canvas texture on it automatically. Uh, we don't want it too strong, but it's okay. I, I might just uh, go over with uh, a smudge tool in a second. I want a little bit here as well. So I, I, if we, we like this, like Bob Ross used to say, uh, little mistakes, they're our friends. We don't want big mistakes. <laughs> no, 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 sir, little mistakes. Okay, so that's there. Let me see if I can just smudge this a bit in. There you go, just smudge it a bit away. Uh, last question in the meantime. Uh, surface book is okay, I it, but it's not fond of lock on drivers. It will kill the pen and touch when the drivers are installed. Yeah, that happens with Windows as well in general. So, oh man, Windows, I like you, but I don't like you at the same time. Can you please suggest some pens for sketching available outside of the Netherlands? Uh, I, I don't know, just go to your local shop, local art shop, or just your, your, the supermarket that sells everything. If you have action, you can find pens and also cheap markers there. Actually, I, I made a video once that if, if you have action, the supermarket chain, then there's a lot of um, good pens that you can get there, mm -hmm. uh, markers. Okay, we went over the books, but that's not a problem because it's easily erasable. Oh, I'm also erasing the detail there. So maybe it is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Just pay attention when erasing. Okay, now, now I'm, I'm more happy with this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna take a little bit the soft brush, work just a bit more on the edges. I like that, there we go. It, it needs this, this pop a little bit, I feel like. Let me see. Blow it up. And I'm gonna edit a bit here as well. The thing is when you start painting, you can easily start over painting. And as, as I'm afraid I'm going into that territory. So that's also why I want to stop relatively soon, which is now. One more thing that you can do. I have no signature, so that's always do a signature, <laughs> but uh, a bit of a shadow. There we go. And you just have to, I already laid out the shadow with this little here. So I'm just gonna throw an extra dark in there. I'm gonna make sure that I have a bit of a feather let's say a three, full black, soft brush, make it big. Yeah, and you can always be a bit darker under the thing and you become less dark as you come away because there's more light bouncing. And 
and there's also more darkness at the legs. More darkness at the legs. There you go. And as I said, uh, don't forget about that signature. Which is, there we go. And today's date is the 0509. 2020. Boom. Well, with that, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, jumping in on this live stream. I did hope, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back soon again with more videos and more stuff. You just enjoy and uh, have, a, have a nice weekend. And thanks again for uh, popping in. Bye-bye, everybody.